Well, I haven't had the Wildcat Trail very long, but I gotta say, what little I've got to ride it with the absolute ferocious winter we've been having. I am absolutely loving this little guy. Do I love it more than Mighty Mouse? Well, of course not, but it's quickly skyrocketing up to the top of my favorites list. Now, yes, it does have its little quirks. It vibrates and rattles like crazy. It threw the mud like crazy, but we took care of that with these Mud Buster fender extensions here on it. But another area I'm going to address today is ground clearance. That is probably the worst aspect to this little Wildcat Trail is it does not have much in way of ground clearance. Now, yes, they make lifts, mostly them puck lifts that just kind of space your springs down. But you usually sacrifice a bit of ride quality when you install those. And I like the way this guy handles now and the way it rides. So the next best thing to installing a small lift is to install some larger tires. Now these guys here are the stock tires. Like I've said before, there's only 200 and some miles. I'm probably getting close to 300 miles on this guy now. So these tires are pretty much brand new. However, they are only 25 inch tires. And you know, I just happen to have a set of uh, nice 28 inch carnivores, you know, just sitting around off of the X4 that we don't need on the R Max because it comes with 29 inch tires. So I think we're going to slap these bad boys, rims and all, on the Wildcat Trail. Now, in order to do that, the Wildcat Trail is not the same bolt pattern as Honda and Yamaha. The Wildcat is a 4 on 115 pattern. The Walker Evans rims I have, which fit on the Hondas and Yamahas are a four on 110. So I did have to get these adapters. These will get us from the four on 115 to the four on 110. So that we can simply slap those rims on there. And these will also act as a kind of a wheel spacer for an inch and a half. We have one inch spacers on there right now. So we'll be a little wider than we are, a little taller but i think it's going to help especially if i want to continue to play in the snow i've got to get her up higher because she's really bottoming out and not wanting to go out in this snow but before we touch anything let's go ahead and take some measurements where she's at right now i did go ahead when i first got it and i did adjust my preloads up already so we're a little bit higher than she first was but it's maybe only three quarters of an inch or so again i don't want to go too high and sacrifice right or sacrifice right quality so let's get a measurement here of our stock tires, see how true to measurement they actually are, 25 inches. And we'll grab some ground clearance measurements here and there too. So these Wildcat Trails come with these Trail Pro tires from Carlisle. They are listed as, oh, where are they? Here we go. They're listed as a 25 by eight by 12 on the front. Ah, oh, what air pressure am I at? Let me check, see what my air pressure is for a little bit. Seven pounds, okay. I got seven pounds of air in all four corners, I do believe. And at seven pounds of air, we are measuring about 24 and a half inches. So that's not too bad. That's actually pretty close. I'm sure the, the book probably tells you these should be inflated to 12, 14 PSI. And if you were, they probably were a little bit closer to the 25. So that's not too bad. Pretty close to what they should be. And these rears are what listed as a 25 by 10. And believe it or not, guys, we are right on 25 inches. So these guys are true to size on the rear. Let's get some ground clearance measurements. So I'm going to get a measurement in the front on the side since we've got that nice frame bar that runs pretty much the entire length and from the rear. Here in the front, I am going to go to the bottom of the skid plate right here. And we are right smack on 11 inches. Here on the side, roughly the middle of the machine, we are about nine and a half inches. And here in the back, going to this frame member beneath the hitch, we are at 
10 inches. So quite a difference in measurement, but the underbellies of these wildcat trails were high in the center and they sloped down. So that's why we have a difference in measurements. All right, let's get where we're at for width wise, outside wheel to outside wheel. All right, all right, on the rear here, outside tire, outside tire, if my assistants help. We are at 51 inches on the rear. And on the front, let's go below the bumper here. Ah, just enough to clear. We're at 51 inches on the front, so we're square. So for a little comparison for you guys, I'm going to try to get one of these carnivores to stay up against. Uh. Wow, that's going to be a pretty drastic change. You guys ready? Bam! I like that. I think that's going to be a pretty good bump and tire. All right. And I've already been well impressed with how these carnivores did on the X4. So they should do just as good on the Wildcat Trail here. So let's get this front end jacked up and get this stock tire pulled. Guys, as you can see and might be asking yourself why in the world did you tear that down so far just to replace wheels well I figured since we're already going this far we might as well go ahead and grease our bearings while we're in here so in order to do that you have to take the lower a arm loose so it can drop so you can pull your axles to give you access here into the bearings now these bearings I if you guys can see that as is most often the case there's actually two bearings in there and there is a groove here in the middle well the key to long life in your bearings is to keep that well greased and as there is no grease fitting in there well, you guys need one of these bearing greasers now this for these articats are a 30 millimeter i believe a follower of mine matt Farr, was kind enough to send this to me he used to have a wildcat he no longer has it so he had this brand new setting at home he had no use for. So he sent it to me. So again, Matt, thank you for that. We're going to go ahead and as we replace these wheels, tear this down and grease them. So all you got to do with these bearing greasers is you guys see these have rubber seals. So you simply are going to put that in the hole where your axle was, push it in the whole way, and then it has a grease circuit in there. Give her a few pumps till you see the grease start to come either come through or start to push this out and it has enough if you see here in the center there's this hole where your grease comes out that'll force the hole or that'll force the grease in this crack between the two bearings and get your bearings all greased up so we'll get back at work again we're going to go ahead and grease all four wheel bearings as we go along I got the wheel turned a bit. Ooh, we'll be close. Mud busters, we're gonna be out just a touch past our mud busters, fender flares. But I think that'll be worth it. Because she looks so bad right now. Woo! 
right, let's get them rears on there and get rid of this awful Carolina lean. sitting on 28 inch carnivores and I must say I really like the improvement of the stance those things look mean on there of course they're absolutely filthy same with the Walker Evans bead locks but they look fantastic so let's see what our new measurements are now so coming here to the front our new measurement to the same spot in the skid plate is now, wow, we are at 13 inches. So that's a two inch gain, because I believe we were at 11. So we gained two inches in the front. Here in the middle of our side, we are up 11 and a half. And for the rear again, I can't remember what we were. I was I'm thinking it was 10, which makes sense because now we are at about 12 and a quarter on the rear. So get about a two inch gain in height simply from going to a bigger tire. Now I don't have my lovely wife assistant with me today. So I'm going to eyeball this as best as I can by myself. But for wit. We went from 50 inches right on the money to now we're about 53 and a half in the rear. And for the front, fifty-three and a half. and a half. So we are nice and square. And full disclosure guys, the reason why we're square, you probably noticed in the time-lapse footage, I did stack my adapters with the one inch spacers on the rear. I do not recommend doing that again. Make that very clear. I do not recommend spaced or I do not recommend stacking spacers. But uh, and again, it works for whistling diesel. But anyway, this is just kind of temporary. I'm just kind of seeing how this guy is going to behave with 28 inch tires anyway. I'm wanting these carnivores to be able to throw a Mighty Mouse when I'm not needing the big 32s and just doing normal trail riding. So this setup's only temporary. If I like the 28 inch tires on the trail and it handles them well, I will probably go ahead and order tires for the stock 12 inch rims that came on. We are sticking out past our fender flares a little bit. Probably about an eighth of a tire. But if you've watched my ride videos in the past, you know I'm not afraid of the mud. So uh, I don't really care much about that. So speaking of riding videos, the only thing we have left to do is to hop in this buggy and take her out there and see how it does, especially with all this snow we still have.
gotta say, these carnivores are an absolute wonderful upgrade to my Wildcat Trail. They're just as good in the snow as they were on the Wolverine X4. Although I probably am gonna have to adjust and play around with my air pressure a little bit because I think they're a little stiff for this lighter machine. They're still at 12 pounds, which is what I ran them at the heavier X4. This guy weighs in just under a thousand pounds, so I could probably lower her down to about 10, get a little better grip. She feels a little squirrely, not squishy like there's not enough air, but a little too rigid, I guess, to where it turns a little too sharp. It's hard to explain, but you guys that have messed around with different tires and air pressure probably know exactly what I mean. So we're gonna adjust those a little bit, but as far as what they did to the Wildcat Trail, in general, I love them. They got me up higher. I'm not bottoming out near as bad as I was. Of course, carnivores are a better tread pattern than the stock tires that were on there. And not to mention going with such a taller tire is gonna affect my gear ratio in a way that I'll probably actually get a little bit higher top speed out of her now, which as soon as the rest of this snow keeps thawing out, we'll be able to hook the draggy to her and see what we got performance wise for zero to 30, see what our top speed is. And of course, I'm actually really excited to throw this guy against the new R-Max 1004 to see how they go head to head in some drag racing. So that's coming up too. But carnivores and a bigger tire in general, definitely an awesome upgrade to a Wildcat Trail if you have one. Again, this thought that impressed me on the stock tires, as zippy as it was, and now it seems to be just as zippy. I didn't lose much, if anything going with these bigger tires, as far as I could tell, running around here in the snow. But what I gained was a far, far benefit than what I might have lost. So you guys know me, we'll be testing these out pretty extensively. Come riding weather, we get to hit some trails and go to some different riding areas, especially since my time with these on the X4 really wasn't that awful much. So we really got to test these babies out this year. But I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for your support and whatever means it comes. And until next time, keep on riding. Cut the check.